When I was still living in San Antonio, my best friend and I would sit around and watch TV sometimes. And between episodes, she might go to her bathroom cabinet, take out a makeup kit, and get a box cutter that she would use to cut her wrists, uh, or her stomach, or her legs. And it became such a routine part of our friendship that I didn't really react to it anymore. I just had a clean towel all the time to help her clean it up before it dripped onto the carpet. And we'd sit back down and keep watching TV. Now for her, this was a way to cope with the emotional pain that she was experiencing, whether because of homophobia, because she was a lesbian, or rejection from her peers uh, on campus, and then some off campus, unfortunately. And my question was, how does someone get to the point where they begin to harm themselves as a way to cope with their emotional pain? Well, thanks to research by Naomi Eisenberger at UCLA, we know that there is an overlap in the brain in the processing and the neural circuitry of emotional and physical pain. So let's say you walk into your kitchen one day and you step on a piece of glass and you cut your foot. Well, that sucks. It's going to hurt. And it's going to send a signal you know, to your brain, to your dorsal anterior cingulate cortex, your DECC, to process it. Well, the same thing happens if, say, a man is married and he learns that his husband had an affair, all right? That heartbreak, that emotional pain. Or if you're a kid picked on at school or if you experience homophobia or racism, the same brain region, your DACC, is going to process that pain as well. Now, the catch here is that you can put neosporin on your cut foot, all right? And it'll get better over like three or four days and you'll forget about it. Ten years later, you won't think back to your cut foot because why would you, right? Like it's gone. But you will think back to that time when your husband broke your heart and you had a divorce because that heartbreak lingers. And so emotional pain is kind of unique in that way. And so the next question is, you know, can the kind of pain, if you reduce one, can you help reduce the other? And a study had individuals taking Tylenol or taking a placebo. Now, Tylenol helps you with your physical pain symptoms, right? Maybe for that bad cut foot. But it also helps you with emotional pain because over a period of three weeks in this study, those taking Tylenol reported fewer hurt feelings than those taking just a placebo, all right? So maybe take Tylenol for social rejection next time, all right? And so if we know that, you know, the reduction in one kind of pain helps reduce the other one, we can look at research on individuals who are cutters. And so a study found that if you were to give cutters and non-cutters in the study a quick, painful electric shock, so a physical electric shock, well, once the pain from that, you know, goes away, once it's over, they experience a temporary physiological increase in positive valence and a decrease in negative valence. And those who are cutters, actually experienced a slightly larger decrease in negative valence. So because of its neural overlap, the offset of physical pain also generates an offset of their emotional pain. And that's essentially what cutters are experiencing. When they cut themselves and they feel that, that reward and that release and, and just that, that, that relief from it all. But the obvious problem with that is that it can lead to more and more extreme things over time. They might actually commit suicide at some point. And so it's important for those of us who care about our students and our friends and our family who are going through you know, hurtful experiences in life, you know, hard times in their life emotionally, to not treat their pain any differently than someone who comes to us with like a bloody lip. Because yeah, if you're a teacher and your student has a bloody lip, you're gonna ask who started the fight, you know, who's, who's the person, you're gonna suspend them from school, right? But you're gonna be punished for doing that. Because the blood's right there, you can, you can see it, okay, there's a fight. But you can't see the emotional blood, say, in someone's heart from what they're feeling, from the emotional pain that they're going through. And so it's important, as we look at social policy, to not treat their pain any differently than someone who has emotional pain, right, or physical pain, because we should expand our concept of mental health parity to those who are victims of bullying at school, right? And we shouldn't be any more lenient towards those who are emotional bullies, who engage in ostracism or spreading rumors or gossip or the mean girls crowd, right? Like we shouldn't be any more lenient towards them than those who cause physical pain. Because yes, sticks and stones and fists, they, they can break bones, I know, but words can actually take someone's life. Thank you.